Do it into the mic. Okay. Take take two. <laughs> um, I feel I feel really bad now because Colin was so nice to me. <laughs> uh, but I'm so glad we heard that. That was absolutely beautiful. And Colin, you really it really comes out how much his family are together, and it really comes out how much Claire means to him. And it's it's, it's just it really is very very heartwarming to see. I must say, and uh, we all know it. To be perfectly honest, but uh, but it's. Well, it's a fantastic day one, okay? <laughs> so it's absolutely brilliant. Um, but Colin, said, Colin was right when he said that, you know, they had to postpone a little bit on the dates and stuff like that. They had to push it out a little bit, and that's okay. Because thankfully, we are all here now today. And that's absolutely what I love. Um, but one of the big things that people don't know is there was, there was actually quite a, there was quite a, like, a late, what I would say, issue. Where, I don't know if you guys follow the news at all, but... Uh, Facebook and Instagram went down last week. Anyone else get that? And, and the wedding was not going to go ahead unless those two were invited, okay? Unless those two were invited. <laughs> well, thankfully, everything came back on track and we're all, we're all good to go, all right? But it was fantastic. Um, I also want to reiterate absolutely how gorgeous the bridesmaids were. Absolutely brilliant, because the best man has to do that, so very good. <laughs> And also the little showstoppers, the absolute, uh, you know, gorgeous little ones that, uh, that, that came out the Flower Girls as well. So it was really, really amazing. <laughs> but we were actually here very early this morning, and we kind of saw a good lot of behind the scenes. And we saw, we saw like, we, we saw the, the bridesmaids getting ready, and, and you know, all of this, and there's a lot of hustle and muscle. So I must say, they really did a great job of getting Claire ready, on time, and uh, looking as beautiful as we all knew she would be. So it was absolutely fantastic. So well done. <laughs> Very, really nice. But I too took my groomsman duties very, very seriously. Okay? Very seriously. This, this, this is an absolute honor for me, and I really mean that. So Colin was, was, quite, was, was quite diligent, you know, and he was quite, quite specific in telling me what to do. So he told me, be on time, okay? okay. That, that was good, that was a good first step, okay? He also told me, a couple other nice things, he told me to have chicken dippers ready for him just in case he got hungry, <laughs> quite nice. So I have them here in my pocket. Uh, um, the, the food here was beautiful today, but this is not Colin food, by the way, at all. <laughs> this is not what Colin eats. So we were chicken dippers just ready, just in case for you, just in case for you my friend, which I must say was, was quite nice. Uh, but in reality, it, it's such a special thing to, to actually be here today, to, to, to really be here and, and to stand up for you. So I like that. But the other thing is, is that Colin kind of said something to me very interesting, kind of in the early stages of when we were getting ready for the wedding. And he wanted everything to be exact. He wanted everything to be perfect. So he told me to be ready. And I kind of thought, what does that mean? He, he told me to be ready because he told me a Thursday wedding comes with extra considerations. Does anyone know what extra considerations comes on a Thursday wedding? No, no. I know, so I had to figure it out, okay? <laughs> so Colin, don't you worry, all right? I went to extra lengths to record Home and Away for you today <laughs> so that it's ready for you to watch tomorrow when you get back, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, good man. <laughs> So, but basically, um, one of the other duties that I have is, is this speech, which is exactly what I, what, I, what I took on very well. Well, one of the things that is that I was quite, I was quite kind of, I would say, considerate, where we have so many funny stories about Colin, by the way. <laughs> so I talked to as many people as I could. His brother's absolutely brilliant, and everyone kind of came to me with different bits and different nuggets and all this type of stuff. So I kind of thought, how do I narrow this down? Thankfully, an awful lot of them have been included, which is great. Poetry included, absolutely. But I decided to be a little bit different. I decided to leave it a little bit up to fate. So what I did was I created this lucky bowl. All right? So basically, here is quite a number of stories that have been submitted. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is... Oh, dear. I'm going <laughs> to... 
I, <laughs> be, bow down to the ball, okay? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out random, and then we're going to see we're going to see what comes out. Is that all right? Leave out the ball. Okay. <laughs> this is actually a good one. <laughs> Um, so Colin and I actually have quite a good history with buses. So you would have heard Colin mention earlier on that we, we spent a long time together on the secondary school bus and on the primary school bus. And this is actually some of my fondest memories of actually going to school. Now one of the reasons for that is, is that we used to have absolutely great fun and it was, it was absolute chaos at times. But one of the things is when I was in fourth year and Colin was in sixth year, Colin actually got an MP3 player. Do you guys all remember MP3 players? Yeah? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> all right. And so basically, Colin uploaded a lovely playlist of songs. And this playlist of songs, it used to start off quite mellow. It was a little bit early in the morning, so it was nice and easy. But the thing is, is that the songs got faster. And they got kind of more upbeat towards the end. And the last song, do you remember what the last song used to be before, be before we got off the bus? It was Eye of the Tiger, Eye of the Tiger from the Rocky movies. Do you guys remember this? <laughs> so basically, there is nothing like a song like that to get you super pumped and enthusiastic about the school day ahead, all right? <laughs> so we used to walk into school absolutely flying. <laughs> so whether you put it into sports, which is absolutely what Colin did because he excelled, or academics, which he also excelled in, uh, sometimes. <laughs> Um, e is for effort. <laughs> oh, sorry, E is for excellent. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually for neither. <laughs> but, uh, but basically, right, he, he used to put all this time in, and it was, it was absolutely fantastic times. But years later, we kind of ended up on another bus together when we were going on a pub crawl. So we do this every so often where we go on a pub crawl all around the pubs in our area, okay? And Colin, well, let's just say I don't think we had the right music that day, all right? <laughs> so Colin got very, very in enthusiastic again, as you can imagine, and he had a few drinks, you know, coupled then with a little bit of the motion of the bus up and down, let's just say his enthusiasm came back up again, okay? <laughs> but that's not it, okay? So one of his very, very good friends came to his rescue. For some very strange reason, he had a plastic bag in his back pocket, and he whips it out out of absolutely nowhere, and he puts it to Colin, and the day was partially saved, all right? Now you're thinking, that's a friend. That is a friend. But a true friend in that situation, a true friend takes out their phone <laughs> and starts recording it, okay? <laughs> I have copies for anyone who wants it. <laughs> so basically, right, it all, it all settled down eventually. <laughs> we watched that video so many times. We had such a great, great laugh then as we went on. So we got, we, got, we got great crack out of it. We really did. But the one thing that we didn't get, the one thing that we didn't get, was our deposit back, okay? <laughs> so, uh, no, no, no more buzzes. <laughs> okay, so he got off lightly there, by the way. That was good, that was good. So, who's up, who's up for another lucky dip? Yeah. We try again? <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, this was kind of this is kind of something that was touched on. But Colin is a man of many jobs. All right, <laughs> he has he has had a lot of jobs over the years. But his job history started in Newgrange Farm. Newgrange Farm was a, a lovely. It's a lovely place for kids to come, and they, they they pet the animals, they pet the puppies, they pet the chickens, they do all of this. But Colin was in charge. Okay. So Colin used to walk in there, absolutely command his area, okay? Those children were there not only to have fun, but it was there to have 
controlled fun, okay? <laughs> so they did absolutely what they were told, and he, he, he strutted around. It was fantastic. It was fantastic to watch. But the thing is, is that when you, when you kind of exude that confidence, you start to get noticed. <laughs> so needless to say, when Colin did eventually start to go, or as they did eventually move on, he, uh, he, he broke a few hearts along the way, <laughs> and he kind of left them in the farm. But the only thing is, is that to this day, Colin is still absolutely revered as a hero, and they will put up a statue to him. He was such a brilliant, brilliant employee. That's fantastic, okay? <laughs> but Colin had to leave because Colin had to go on to work with his Uncle Jimmy, which was fantastic. So Colin went on to do his trade, and Colin's actually an incredibly talented plasterer, and he's actually incredibly talented. He's very artistic. But this actually brought Colin to, to kind of a nice place. It brought him to the Plastering Olympics. Does anyone know what the Plastering Olympics is? <laughs> so basically, Colin won a medal at the Plastering Olympics for his talent. Absolutely amazing, amazing achievement, um, I, I think. <laughs> But Colin ended up on a, on a job as a plasterer in Templemore. You know Templemore? Templemore is where they have the, the trainee Gardaí. So when Colin ended up in Templemore, something changed in him. Something changed in him where he kind of came back thinking he was a guard. <laughs> he, <laughs> he started wearing a uniform. <laughs> and kind of just putting himself a bit of it, you know? <laughs> well, I know Colin an absolute long time, long time. So I saw through him, okay? And honestly, I really do think that it might just have been a ruse or kind of a way of him actually buying handcuffs. <laughs> That's just what I hear, okay? That's just what I hear. <laughs> so thankfully, Garda, Colin's guard of fantasy eventually kind of, yeah, pittered out a little bit. <laughs> which was great, and uh, Colin went on to actually then be um, a Sky installation man. So you know the Sky installers? Absolutely fantastic. So Colin took to this job as brilliantly as he does everything else, okay? And he really does. So Colin was so, so, so basically, he was so diligent, he was so understanding, he really does, he really does bring this to every job he was in. So much so that myself and Colin were actually at an international football match, and we were walking down the street going to the match. And Colin saw one of his engineers. <laughs> and he shouts across the road at the engineer. He says, hey, you, did you get that job done? And next thing, oh my god, your aunt kind of looks up and he sees Colin. And next thing, he kind of just sheepishly looks away and then just kind of didn't answer and walks off. And Colin walks off, not, not pleased, not pleased at all, okay? But this type of, you know, can-do attitude this kind of commitment to his work, and this ability to harass people on their day off, <laughs> got him noticed. <laughs> so he ended up getting a wonderful job with appliances delivered, all right? So he went into the appliances, uh, appliances, thing, appliances game. So we are actually all very grateful that this happened. We're all very, very grateful that Colin decided to sell washing machines <laughs> and other appliances at competitively low prices <laughs> with next day national uh, installation and delivery. <laughs> and in truth, <laughs> in truth, this really was fantastic <laughs> because uh, this is actually where he met. Claire. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, uh, this is actually why we're all here today. So we're so happy for him. <laughs> so Colin, you did a great job and you really were the winner in that job, which is fantastic. <laughs> okay, do we have time for one more? Yeah. No? Do we go? One more? <laughs> okay. <laughs> actually, this one's brilliant. This one's brilliant because uh, this actually kind of ties in with today a little bit. So, did anyone wonder why Colin didn't have a ceremony in a church? No. <laughs> no. No. 
well, if you did wonder, um, let me explain. <laughs> Uh, so like I said, I've known Colin my whole life. We do absolutely everything together. And uh, the last time I was on the altar with Colin in an actual church was for my wedding. So I was really so, so happy that he shared that day with me and he stood there for me. But the last time before that <laughs> was when we were altar boys back in the day. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, so it was altar boys back in the day. Now, has anyone here ever been to Midnight Mass? Yeah? yeah. So, so, so basically, back when we were altar boys, Midnight Mass was actually held at midnight, which was fantastic. Now, if you know anything about Colin, Colin absolutely loves his sleep. He is a man who loves sleep, so don't get me wrong. He loves ketchup, but Jesus, he sleeps, okay? <laughs> so when you think about Colin serving at Midnight Mass, having to stay up, you can't really be that surprised about what kind of happened next, all right? <laughs> so I was standing there on the altar beside Colin, which was excellent, and there was a reading going on. So I was doing my very, very best to look as holy as I could. <laughs> and next thing, all of a sudden, Colin just kind of starts to walk. He starts to take a step or two, just going forward, going forward. And I continue to kind of just stand there and going, Oh, what, what's he kind of doing? So I kind of thought in my head that Colin goes, that baby Jesus in the manger there, God, he looks really comfortable. <laughs> I think I'll just snuggle in beside him. <laughs> so Colin then proceeds to collapse into the middle of the manger in the middle of mass, all right? And this actually happened, by the way. <laughs> so it was fantastic. The only problem was is that on the way down, Colin actually grabbed a bunch of candles. So when he lands in the crib, he actually bursts into flames, all right? The reader then starts to shout into the microphone, Jesus the fire. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, okay? I know what you're thinking. I did not budge, all right? I stood there, looking wholly committed to my altar boy duties. But thankfully, Jean, <laughs> who was singing in the choir up in the top tier of the church. Well, well, we're not quite sure, but we think she jumped from the top tier <laughs> of the church and landed. And honestly, when you see her cradling her baby boy on the altar, it just, it just brings a tear to your eye. <laughs> And, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why it was not held in a church today. <laughs> but actually, the, the overall point of that story is, um, you know, I'm sure you guys are fully, fully aware, but the Mullins are just a, such a fantastic family. They really are. And Jean would do absolutely anything for her boys, anything for all of her, all of her grandchildren as well, that included. <laughs> but the thing is, I've known them a very, very long time. They're, you know, Colin's brothers are like my brothers, my brothers are like his brothers, and, and my brothers would have been here today, except one of my brothers had a, a brand new baby the other day, and my other one's in Australia. <laughs> so basically, this is, a, this is a very special day for us, and um, the Mullins absolutely welcomed me into their family, their, their whole life, and there's not a birthday, a celebration, absolutely anything that our family and their family have not shared. It, it really has been very special. And in truth, and I won't lie, I have left a lot of clippings on the editing floor, all right? <laughs> and we'll just leave them be. <laughs> but, but in reality, um, you know, I, we, I was one of the first people to meet Claire for Colin, just like Jess did her a little bit of her vetting. I wasn't quite as uh, diligent as she was, <laughs> but I knew straight away absolutely how special Claire was. And I knew that she would be an absolutely wonderful addition to the Mullins, which is absolutely wonderful. And we're so, so happy to have her here today. And also for the three little daughters that has, that has come along, them two are just so special. They, they really are. I watched Ruby grow and grow and grow. <laughs> little India's blossomed absolutely. And, uh, and this little one here is an absolute darling. And she is my godchild, so she's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> she's a lovely little one. So I'll leave it there. But I'll ask you all 
to raise your glass just one more time to the happy couple. Because, thank you, we, we, we genuinely don't know what happiness comes for these people. But the only thing that we do know that's going to be in their future, if it is, is that if they have another baby, it will be a girl. <laughs> and it will be named after a character in Home and Away. All right? <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>